So for the most part, DNC chair candidate Keith Ellison has played nice in the DNC chair race. And this is to his own detriment, honestly, because many of his supporters, the more ardent progressive supporters like myself, we've wanted him to kind of be more critical of the Democratic Party establishment, but he hasn't done that. He's tried to play nice. But finally, Keith Ellison is taking the gloves off, and he actually has some criticism for Tom Perez. So according to the Washington Post, in a letter sent to members of the Democratic National Committee, Representative Keith Ellison is accusing a DNC chair rival of misleading committee members to give the impression that the the race was surging toward his opponent. One of the other great candidates for this race released an unverifiable public whip count earlier this week, Ellison said in the letter. You received a voicemail, email, and a text message trying to make the race sound like it's over. And the goal is clear to exert pressure on you. We chose not to engage in the same tactics because we believe you deserve the respect to make your own decision without a finger on the scale. However, I feel compelled to respond. We are very confident in our whip count and are in an excellent position to win next week. Ellison's letter did not mention Thomas Perez, but two days ago, the former Labor Secretary released a memo claiming that 180 of the DNC's 447 members had endorsed him, putting him just 44 votes away from victory at the February 25th election in Atlanta. That rankled Ellison's team, which said it believed that some of the members counted by Perez were still up for grabs. Later, as the letter circulated on Twitter, Perez's spokeswoman, Hinojosa, asked why Ellison was spending his time harping about whip counts. Trump is trying to destroy our country and dreamers are being detained, but instead some are arguing about how high our whip count is, she wrote. And this is the same tactic that we've seen all along. Uh, Perez doesn't want to address his criticism. He just wants to pivot to Donald Trump. And she talks about dreamers being deported. Uh, what did President Obama do while Tom Perez was labor secretary? President Obama was the deporter in chief. And this is what Tom Perez had to say about that. <laughs> Oh, that's right. He didn't say shit about it because Tom Perez doesn't really care. He's using this to distract people from the criticism that he's receiving that is justified. Now, make no mistake about it. This is a typical establishment trick. They want to demoralize people uh, and think that the race is over. So that way they just fall in line and support the person who's going to win. So that way, you know, he doesn't clean house when he gets into the DNC. It's really disgusting. And it's a way that, you know, Tom Perez is trying to tip the scales in favor of himself, just like Debbie Wasserman Schultz tipped the scales in favor of Hillary Clinton. We're calling people out for rigging the primary against Bernie, and here he is trying to rig the DNC chair race. This is just unbelievable. And this guy has an actual chance of really winning. And if he's the DNC chair, oh my god, this is gonna there's going to be hell to pay. Let's just put it that way. We're all going to be bombarding the DNC with calls because this decision is, it's really important. As I stated before in a different segment, this will not just determine the future of the Democratic Party. The outcome of this election will determine whether or not the Democratic Party has a future at all. Because if you make Tom Perez the DNC chair, someone who's already hated by half the party, you will face resistance. With Tom Perez, we're getting the same thing. I mean, we saw how people try to demoralize Bernie Sanders supporters when it comes to the Associated Press, for example, calling the race for Hillary Clinton when people were still waiting in line voting for Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. We saw how... Bernie Sanders supporters were so demoralized because even before anyone cast their vote, they thought that there was no chance that Bernie would win because of superdelegates. I mean, when it comes to New Hampshire, Bernie Sanders won in a landslide, but yet when you factor in superdelegates, well, Hillary Clinton still took away more delegates. So this is what they try to do to progressives. They make it seem as though it's impossible and they can't win, and then people internalize it and they think, well, maybe it is impossible, so I might as well either stay home or just vote for the person who's going to win because everyone else likes that person more. It's not right, and Tom Perez is really shady for doing this, and honestly, he's lucky that Keith Ellison is being so nice to him. If I were Keith Ellison, I would be raising hell about this and making a big fuss because, and look, the letter is great, but I think that Keith Ellison is being too nice, and Bernie Sanders was too nice, and these are, you know, some of the few criticisms that I have about progressive leaders who I actually like. Stop playing nice. The Democratic Party is doing everything that they can to smear you and defame you. It's time to take off the gloves and actually sling mud back at them like they've been doing to you. So, I mean, I'll just say this. If Tom Perez wins... The Democratic Party is done, and the resistance that they're going to face is going to be monumental. We will call them every single day. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.